empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. The Alex Jones Show. Because there is a war on for your mind. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. Now, this hour is brought to you by MyPatriotSupply.com. With all the false flags taking place, it's clear there's no longer time to wait. You need to start getting prepared today. If you don't have food, you're no threat to the new world order. But you can fight back and establish independence for you and your family by securing your own private supply of storable food. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex You'll get some special offers for listeners of this broadcast. And for a limited time, they are offering additional discounts off their already low prices. That website, again, is mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex. We have on the phone with us Police Chief Shane Harger of New Mexico. And we've been talking about the events that led up to this. And we covered it last night on the nightly news. And that's something, if you're not a Prison Planet TV subscriber, you need to get a subscription. Support the organization as well as Get this subscription that you can hand out to 10 other people at the same time. They can watch the broadcast. We try to make it as widely available as possible. We're just trying to help pay for the broadcast here as well as the bandwidth of putting it out there. 
And last night we had Police Chief Harger as well as Sheriff Mack. We interviewed them, talked about this amazing situation where the police chief was placed on leave and his police force was disbanded after he was singled out on his way to go to a Constitutional Sheriff's and Peace Officers Association meeting. He was singled out by the TSA. He was told he was a person of interest and he was also told by the sheriff that disbanded them that uh, he was it was because of his political affiliations police chief harger thank you for joining us hey thanks for having me now last night you had a meeting uh to find out what the status your status was going to be can you give us an update on what it is right now well i'm uh, as a result of last night's meeting i was placed on probation there was disciplinary action taken against me I was not instructed as to um, why this interaction was taken against me. This was an open forum. Um, uh, they said there would be a 14-day probationary period with conditions, and they did not state what those conditions were, they being the town council. Wow. Uh, the, the people of our village were somewhat set back by that and, and was very vocal about it. You know, what conditions are you talking about and probation for what? And so that's kind of where we stand from a, an employment standpoint. But... As yes. far as the issues that are that are transpiring with TSA, I've had quite a bit of information come across my plate. And I'm looking into it, still trying to make heads or tails of this whole situation. Well, they say very closed-mouthed about everything. I We've had situations with a fellow who had been just cleared by the TSA to uh, work on shipping areas, and he was traveling to Japan, stopped in Hawaii. It was a military flight. His his wife was in the military. They took him off the plane in Hawaii, said he was on the no-fly list, and he was stranded in Hawaii for quite some wow. time, could never get any information about why he was put on the no-fly list. Eventually, through pressure inside the military, we believe, we don't know for sure because they're so closed mouthed and secretive about everything, he was allowed to fly again, but he still was never able to get any information from the government as to why he was put on the list or, or if he was still on the list. This is what's really concerning to everyone is that we now have these secret FISA courts that are meeting in secret claiming that they are having these, and they're not even courts, they don't have anybody arguing the other side, there's no jury, there's just a single judge who basically rubber stamps whatever the government wants to do. These court decisions are secretive, we're never allowed to see them, the public isn't. And yet they maintain that they are modifying our Constitution. It's a very dangerous thing when the government is turning to these kind of star chamber procedures, isn't it? It is, and, and the Constitution is not subject to interpretation. It's a, it's a document that is a living document, and no one can change it. Yes, I, we had a discussion, as I mentioned earlier. We went to San Antonio. We pointedly, Alex Jones and Anthony Gucciardi, pointedly asked the police chief if he would confiscate guns have told to do so. And he says, well, I'm not going to give you an answer. That's a hypothetical. <laughs> and Anthony said, your oath to the Constitution is not a hypothetical. And they train for these scenarios all the time. That was the very first thing, as a matter of fact, on this list that everybody signed at the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. The very first thing that was on the list was that uh, they, well, the first thing was registration of personal firearms under any circumstances. And then, of course, the number two thing was confiscation of firearms without probable cause and due process that that you would not support that because, of course, registration always precedes confiscation. It's something we're very concerned about, and we've been talking about this quite some time. And I guess maybe for you, your initial response was to be cooperative, just like our response is typically to be cooperative. But you were surprised at how intrusive this was and how they kept at you, and eventually you pushed back on this, right? Well, absolutely. I mean, for example, I pull over a vehicle for a minor speeding offense. There, there are plenty of times that when I make contact with the driver, um, they're not pleased that I have them pulled over, but they're still compliant. They do what I ask, but they're, they're not happy about the circumstances. And you know what? That's okay. This is America. There's nothing wrong with expressing yourself. Uh, if you have displeasure in a particular situation, you feel you've been wronged, there's due process. And that's all this was. I was being harassed, in my opinion, and I think the facts support that. Also, I made I made the point that you know I didn't appreciate it. I wanted to be uh, allowed to travel freely, and I was not allowed to do that. Uh, time and time again, I was stopped and, and harassed and annoyed and, and questioned like this is Nazi Germany. And, you know, papers, please prove who you are. And and what made this more egregious and, and injurious to me uh, is I'm a U.S. citizen. I I I'm obviously uh, not of, of foreign national descent. You know, blonde hair, blue eyes. 
uh, and a country accent. I mean, I'm from here. I was born and raised here. My grandfather uh, fought in Korea. My father fought in Vietnam. He was a military police officer. He served as a municipal police officer. And here I have served uh, on and off since 1998 in some law enforcement capacity or another, currently serving as chief of police. And they knew this, that I was serving as chief of police and treated me as though my name was Osama bin Laden. Yes. I didn't appreciate it. And there was, there was dramatic repercussions for, for vocalizing the fact that I didn't appreciate being treated that way. Well, if you'd been a member of the bin Laden family, they would have given you the VIP treatment, just like they gave the Muslim Brotherhood, just like they did give the bin Laden family right after September 11th. They're really coming after American citizens. That's the target. And it's constitutional sheriffs. It's American citizens who haven't done anything. They have declared us as the enemy in their internal documents. And I think that that is the thing that I find most interesting about this is the political affiliations. That's what the sheriff told you, that it was because of political affiliations. Whether it's because of political affiliations or whether it's because this TSA agent got annoyed that you stood on your rights, either way, we're looking at a very corrupt situation like that where a police department can be disbanded. Can you tell us what they did to your police department? Well, you know, let me clarify something real quickly. As far as the sheriff was concerned, he did not tell me specifically, directly, that this was because of my political affiliation. But based up upon statements that he made that were certainly of a political nature, uh, one could only derive that conclusion. But that having been said, uh, when I get back from, uh, from my trip to the Constitutional Sheriff's and Peace Officers Association, I'm immediately told that I'm being placed on this administrative duty, administrative leave, whatever. I'm relieved of my, my chief's position, basically, uh, in, in essence. I'm, I'm stuck behind a desk. And I was ordered to take all equipment and uniforms, badges, et cetera, from all of my officers. And they claim it's only an inventory. When you tell an officer, turn in your badge and gun, as a law enforcement officer, it's not just what you do. It's who you are. You know, I, I want to make something abundantly clear. I, I am a public servant. Yes, I have the title of chief of police, but I'm a public servant. I am a servant. And my officers shared in that mythology. We're here to serve the people. And we treated our people with dignity and respect. But we didn't get that same dignity and respect from our own village government. Uh, no explanation to my officers as to what was going on, just turning your stuff. As a result, regardless of what decisions the village makes from here on out, they refuse to come back. And so we have no police department. Hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's very discouraging. It, it hurts my feelings. It's wrong on a lot of levels. People are backpedaling on some situations. You know, when you try to hold people's feet to the fire for their actions and hold them accountable, that's truly what we're talking about here is yes. transparency and accountability. If someone messed up, let's just, let's just admit to it. Hey, this was a mistake. This was handled inappropriately. What can we do better next time? And let's just move forward. But they're not doing that. Well, we're all very concerned because I tell you what I see here from our perspective, because we're covering this day after day after day. This is a very deliberate Countrywide experiment in behavior modification. My wife, when she was taking her master's degree, she had a book from B.F. Skinner. It was called Beyond Freedom and Dignity. And when I saw it, I said, well, it's about time somebody complained about the schools. <laughs> she said, no, no, you don't understand. I had not been introduced to the, to the work of B.F. Skinner before. Basically, he's a behaviorist. And when they do things like put their hands on you, and then if you are a good person and, and you do everything that they say, you let them touch you any way that they want, do anything to you that they want. They will reward you with letting you get into the Super Bowl or letting you travel on a plane. This is positive operant conditioning straight out of B.F. Skinner. They were training teachers to do this to their pupils. This is a massive experiment that we're all a part of. The Constitution is being pushed aside. The law is being pushed aside. We have a massive behavioral experiment going on here. And what we need to do is just tell them uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. I'm not going to be your dolphin anymore. We have <laughs> basic rights and we need to stand up for these rights. And I really appreciate you standing up for those rights. I really appreciate you standing up for our rights as a constitutional sheriff and going to this. You had some very moving words about that meeting that you went to. Did well, you, you know, want to share that with I, us? I had the pleasure, uh, the, the distinct pleasure of sitting in a room full of people, dignitaries, if you would. They don't view themselves as such. They view themselves as, as servants, and they were dedicating their time and resources and energy into constructing um, a resolution that would reaffirm the, the inevitable, the, 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 the pre-existing document, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights. And all they were doing is, is coming together in a, in, a, in a unified effort to say, 
We're we're public servants. We have a flock to protect. We're going to protect our sh-